This is Valley News Live at 4. While some of us are just dealing with wind and cold today, a winter storm is battering others. Let's head straight to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson this afternoon with a look at what's going on. Hutch. Thanks so much, Stacy. It's a first alert weather day. We've been monitoring this system for the last several days, and it's coming with more moisture and a little more intensity than we anticipated, and therefore we do have some concerns. Look at the radar. South of Fargo, you see this deep blue line here. That is a band of heavy snow, large flakes working their way through. It's moving north northeast at 15 to 20 miles per hour heading into the FM area. It has passed through parts of central and southern Richland County. South on 29, you see the dark blue over at Wolverton and Colfax and a little farther south of that is Gal shoot and joining us now is our very own Aaron Walling with a report on what is going on on South I-29 as this band pushes through Aaron. Hutch, it is windy and cold out here and we're outside Gal shoot. The road conditions are pretty bad. Parts of the I-29 are about 75 miles per hour. As we were getting out here, we were dropping down to 50. There are plows going in and out, trying to get the snow off the road. And I am not kidding when I say the wind is coming in sideways. My face right here is cold and bitter. The other side's pretty dry. And as we've been saying throughout the show, the snow has been really rough out here. And if you look outside, the visibility is pretty stark. You can't see anything past those tree lines and you can barely see vehicles as they go further and further down south. And folks, as we are saying, it is windy and cold. Please be careful out there when you're driving on the I-29. Back to you, Hutch. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. Here's a quick look at the North Dakota Department of Transportation road report southeast North Dakota with some uh, slippery road conditions developing, and that's where we heard from Aaron Walling moments ago. A winter storm warning has been posted for northeast South Dakota in the lakes country. So if you are anywhere from Traverse County, Wilkin County, and on up into Otter Tail and even Wadena counties, a band of heavy snow is going to push its way through. That's surrounded by the blues there. That's a winter weather advisory where there'll be slightly less snow and believe it or not. We have a tornado watch in effect for our neighbors in southern Minnesota. Look at all the thunder and lightning taking place throughout southern Minnesota, heading toward the Twin Cities where hail has been reported. All right, here's the latest. This white that you see on here is called bright banding. Those are huge flakes from just outside of Bemidji through southern parts of Clearwater County and right through the uh, Detroit Lakes area, Audubon and out towards Holly. That's heading in the Fargo-Moorhead area and in about an hour we'll see some flake potential here and this will We'll coat the roads with a layer of slippery for your commute home. I'll have hour by hour details on where this is all going, why we think there could be some significant amounts of shovel trouble, Stacy, for some of our viewing area as we're just getting started with this weather making system into the overnight. Complete details here in just a few minutes. Hutch, thanks so much. Just night and day different from yesterday, huh? <laughs> 65 30s. Couldn't and be more polar opposite. Winter storm, right. All right, thanks again. Here's a look at today's top four at four. The next round of stimulus checks could be coming soon. The U.S. House of Representatives voted to approve the $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill this afternoon. Now the bill is on its way to President Biden's desk where he's expected to sign it into law tomorrow. We'll have more on when you can expect to get your check coming up in about five minutes. A 17 year old is in a Fargo hospital after Bemidji police say he was shot last night. Officers responded to a report of several gunshots just after 930 at 2830 Ridgeway Avenue Northwest. Police secured the area and checked both floors of the apartment building but found nothing. They got a call from Sanford Health minutes later saying a teenager with a gunshot wound was brought into the hospital. The boy wasn't able to give police a description of the person who shot him. He's in serious condition. A Jamestown man is in jail tonight accused of setting a home on fire. It happened Sunday near Ypsilanti. 59 year old Raymond Rizzer is being held in the Stutzman County Correctional Center on $10,000 bond. Police say he threatened to burn down a home, then actually set it on fire. Police were able to track him down after spotting his vehicle at the scene. On the third day of the trial of the former Minneapolis police officer charged in the killing of George Floyd, the prosecution brought up the issue of spark of life witnesses who testify on behalf of the life of the victim. Prosecuting attorney Matthew Frank says two spark of life witnesses will be called, one of whom may speak about Floyd's drug use. Frank says Floyd's drug use will likely become a big issue in this case. 
Minnesota health officials are sharing their concerns about the state's vaccine rollout. Clay County Public Health says the 72 hour window they have to get shots into arms is burdensome. On top of that, the county is seeing less vaccine allocation this week, only getting 500 first doses and 400 second doses. They haven't received any Johnson and Johnson vaccine doses yet. The county requested that vaccine, but say they aren't sure when they'll get it. Requirement from the, go the governor for a 72 hour getting the vaccine out by the time we receive it and then in 72 hours is really a burdensome for our citizens um, and also for us. We can't get the vaccine until Tuesday, so Monday is a wasted day. We can't get vaccine out because we can't carry it over until Monday, so we have to have all the vaccine out by Friday. Clay County health officials aren't the only ones in Minnesota seeing a drop in doses. The Essentia vaccination clinic in Detroit Lakes is seeing less doses than usual. They have a much smaller allocation this week. They say due to the low number of patients wanting the vaccine, staff is expecting only 140 vaccines, but plan to ramp up vaccinations as the state allows more people to receive their shots. We're learning about a new large scale vaccine agreement between the federal government and Johnson and Johnson. The White House senior advisor for COVID-19 response has confirmed the Biden administration will purchase an additional 100 million doses of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. They currently have a deal with the government to provide 100 million doses by the end of June. To stay on top of the latest COVID vaccine related information, use our VNL vaccine tracker. Visit our website or open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen then tap the link that pops up. President Biden has said his number one priority since coming into office is a nearly $2 trillion coronavirus economic relief package. Now he's on the verge of signing that bill into law. Skylar Henry has details from Capitol Hill. The motion is adopted. Democrats have passed President Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package without Republican support. They we're all conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that we are equal. But in this body, it seems as though only one can have a voice. One of the Republicans inside this House, uh, unanimously apparently, opposed this bill by some 60% of the Republicans in America polled say we're for this bill. Included in the bill is an extension of federal unemployment benefits at $300 a week, money to help schools reopen, increase vaccine distribution, and support for state and local governments. It also includes a tax credit of up to $3,600 per child. The expansions in this bill are estimated to cut child poverty in half. Well, who's going to end up paying back that $5,500 per person? It's going to be the very children that we are professing to help. And there will be a new round of stimulus checks. $1,400 for individuals making $75,000 a year or less. And $2,800 for couples making less than $150,000. Those will start going out this month. President Biden will be able to sign the bill into law this week as the nation marks the one year anniversary of the global pandemic and shutdowns across the country. I can announce that the president will sign the bill uh, at the White House on Friday afternoon. The immediate focus is on increasing vaccine distribution to reach as many people as possible. Today we're averaging above 2 million shots per day. The Biden administration is purchasing 100 million more doses of the Johnson & Johnson single shot vaccine. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Direct deposits are likely to start March 22nd with paper checks starting to arrive the week of March 29th. North Dakota is celebrating 161 new U.S. citizens today. Four naturalization ceremonies took place throughout the day today at the Sanctuary Events Center in downtown Fargo. These new Americans come from 37 different countries and now live in Fargo, West Fargo, Grand Forks, and Jamestown, as well as several cities in western North Dakota. As we celebrate Women's History Month, many of us are learning more about the struggles American women faced as they fought for their rights. A new exhibit at MSUM includes interactive posters that span the history of voting rights from 1848 to 2020. The posters show how pe women, people of color, and indigenous people fought for voting equality. Each poster has its own QR code you can scan for a more interactive experience. The Women's Center coordinator says to never take your right to vote for granted as many risk their livelihoods for women's suffrage.
The theme this year for Women's History Month is, of course, refusing to be silenced, but also continuing to look at uh, really the ways that all women have had to fight for the right to vote and that, you know, not all women were enfranchised with the 19th Amendment in 1920. And that fight has continued for many women. The exhibit is free and open to the public. You can find more information right on our website, valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. Country Music Festival WeFest just announced its full lineup for this year's event, which runs August 5th through the 7th. The festival kicks off with Florida Georgia Line on Thursday, Dirk Bentley on Friday, and Blake Shelton on Saturday. Several local acts will also take the stage. The massive three-day festival has made its home in Detroit Lakes for 37 years. WeFest officials say improvements have been made to the festival grounds, and an expanded general admission area will bring fans 200 feet closer to the stage. Tickets and camping passes are on sale now at WeFest.com. A reminder, the Bison are back at the Fargo Dome this weekend, taking on Illinois State on Saturday. The pregame show starts at 1.30. Kickoff is set for 2.30, and you can catch all the action on KVLY. Up next, a story out of Japan. A man adopts hundreds of abandoned pets after their owners were forced to evacuate. You want to see what winter looks like, even though it is spring, take a look at this time lapse from the Dakota Magic Casino today. Look at the blinding snow making its way through as we went through the early afternoon hours, coating the area with some heavy snow. Your forecast is coming up right after this.